that hath breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And if that's not enough, Psalm 148, 3 and 4, Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens and you waters above the heavens. This Psalm 148 pretty much covers every aspect of, of God's creation from, from the rocks and the dirt and the, the stars to the people and animals and all kinds of stuff. And, and so it ought to give us some idea, some indication of the level of praise that, that God is looking for uh, from us. Amen? Let me, just, let me just use this passage as a launching pad tonight in Psalms 148, starting in verse 1. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You great sea creatures in all of the depths. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling His word, mountains all and, all his, and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, and He has exalted the horn of His people, the praise of all of His saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's a good, good passage. Aren't you glad tonight that we can praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. We, we struck pay dirt. Amen. All creation is like sim, a, a symphony or a great choir composed of harmonious parts that, offer, that together offer up songs of praise to the Lord. Aren't you glad that you're a part of the orchestra? Amen. <clears throat> When I was in, in school, I, I played in band, and I played the valve trombone, and I played the baritone, and uh, the only way that I could be first chair was if there wasn't anybody else in the band in that particular <laughs> instrument. And so, uh, needless to say, I didn't get to sit in first chair very much because you, were, you, you had to play better than somebody else if you wanted to move up a chair. I didn't make it very far in that endeavor. But I'm grateful tonight that we are in first chair when it comes to the things of God. When it comes to praise and worshiping our Creator, every part, independent yet part of the whole, is caught up and carried along in the swelling tides of praise. It happens. We watch it from the platform every service. Two or three people, four, five, eight, or ten people might really be praising the Lord and, and being, being vocal and demonstrative in how we praise the Lord. Others of you are just kind of just worshiping the Lord quietly, but yet at the same time being sucked along in the spiritual realm because of the, the momentum that we get from one another praising the Lord. I, I'm grateful for that, and this is a picture, really, as, of how we as believers uh, should praise God individually, number one. We need to be praising God individually. Amen? We should not be waiting until we get in this house to praise the Lord. We ought to be praising the Lord the minute our eyes pop open in the morning. We ought to be praising the Lord when our eyes shut at night. We ought to be praising the Lord all throughout the day. So individually, we should be praising God. And, and secondarily, as a part of this great choir of believers. Amen? 
this great worldwide uh, choir. Um, I, I, you know this. If you know anything about me, you probably know this. I'm a choir guy. I like choir music. That's why I love what we do at Christmas and at Easter. And Lord willing, we're going to begin to do more and more choir stuff because I like the sound of a choir. I like the way the different parts blend and all that kind of stuff. And it gives everybody an opportunity. Uh, but but uh, it, it takes individuals to make up the mass. Amen? It takes uh, individuals to, to make up the, the, the mass. And so the question that I left us with last week is, are we singing our part well in this worldwide choir of praise? How are we doing as individuals in the mass, in, in the whole? Um, having put that out, I want to shift gears, if I can, just a little and look at, some, look at some of the methods of praise. How many of you know there's different methods of praise? I want to look at some of the methods of praise. Praising God can, can take place in a variety of different ways. In Psalm 100 and verse 4, it says, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. So the progression of worshipers has now reached the gates of the sanctuary and, and, and they burst out in songs of praise. Why is that? Why do you think that that is? Well, the, the, the generic, each one of us probably have our own answer, but just so that I have an, an answer for you if you're stuck, is it's because of the Lord's goodness. Because of the Lord's mercy. How many of you are grateful tonight for the Lord's mercy? How many of you are great, grateful tonight for His loving kindness and, and, and His faithfulness? His faithfulness. He is forever faithful. And I found this parallel passage in 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 13 that says, Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And, they were, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with the cloud. Now, uh, another thing that if you know much about me is that I, I'm, I want nothing more than to see the Shekinah glory fill the house of the Lord. Whether it's this brick building or whether it's going to be our new building, I don't care. I want to see the Shekinah glory. And according to this, it, it took place in, in the, the midst of a people that were praising the Lord with really with abandon. And when we begin to praise the Lord with abandon, what that's going to mean is, I'm not concerned what you sound like. I'm not concerned with you what you think about how, what I sound like. All I'm concerned about is, am I pleasing the Lord? And is He, uh, what He thinks about my praise? I'm not distracted by the things that are going on around me. That's why a lot of times I sit on this platform and and... And, and I don't open my eyes. I keep my eyes shut. You know, because I'm the kind of guy that I see everything that happens in the sanctuary. I'm concerned about this. I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about what's going on behind the, the, in the sound booth. I'm concerned about the people that are coming in. And I see somebody almost stumble and I want to get up and run over there. I have to just shut my eyes. Otherwise, I'm going to drive myself nuts which is a short trip, but, but do, you, do you understand what I'm talking about? Because the enemy wants us, he doesn't want us, he wants to distract us, and he, he doesn't want us to enter into this place of, of unity and, and of orchestration, making one sound, one voice, one act of worship toward God, so that he is so excited that he just... He, have you ever been leaning forward so far that you lose your balance? Anybody ever done that besides the pastor? 
today. <laughs> I can just picture God sitting on the, on the edge of heaven and just getting so caught up in the worship and the, the songs and the sound that's coming up. And it, it's a sweet sound. And he just, he just tips off. He just loses his balance and tips over. And, and he ends up in the Shekinah glory filling the temple of the place where the people are worshiping God. I know he ain't going to lose his balance. I know all that. I know it's all just my mind thinking these things, but I want that to happen. I want this place to be filled. The very first service at the temple began with honoring God and acknowledging his presence and, and his goodness. Now listen, in my, in my flesh, I'm already anticipating our first service over there. In my flesh. What are, you, what are you talking about, Pastor? I've already got it all worked. I already got it worked out. It's going to be a great service. It's going to be a service absolutely filled with praise and worship. I don't care if I don't even get to preach. I don't care. All I want to do is worship the Lord with such abandon in that place. And then the, then, then, then the Holy Spirit comes to me and says, Why don't you do that now? Why are we waiting till we get there? Let's do that here, and maybe there will come quicker. Anybody? Anybody? Just me and Jose. We're on the, woo, Tommy. Woo. Woo. This building or that building shouldn't affect and shouldn't matter how we praise God. We ought to be praising God like wild women and wild men all day, every day. Me and Mike went and got a, 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 an RV yesterday, among other things. We, when we left, it was out of gas, had two flat tires, was, it was a mess. I ain't lying. One, one ounce. I'm not. I'm not. It was it's bad. <laughs> and, 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 but we prayed that God would watch over that thing until we got it home. We finally found a place that would air the tires up. And we brought it home. It ran perfect. Drove perfect. It was even pulling a trailer. It, were, it was perfect. Why? Because we brought God into the equation. I don't care what, whether you think God had anything to do with it or not. I don't care. I do. I, because I think God is mindful of those things. And when we praise God for what He has done and what He has accomplished in our life, He's going to do more in our life. And the devil's going to come after us more because he hates that. The first service began with honoring God and acknowledging His presence and His goodness. And in the same way, our worship should begin by acknowledging God's love. Praise God first, then you and I will be prepared to present our needs to Him. How many of you have got kids? How many of your kids butter you up a little bit and they come in, they butter, they're, butter, they're buttering you up? And we, we've, been, we've been mom and dad long enough to know something coming. Amen? Something coming. <laughs> Listen, we ought to... We ought to be buttering up God just because we love Him, not because we want something. Not because we want something, not because we need something. We need to praise Him and then present our needs to Him. But not because, I'm not praising you, God, because I want something. I'm praising you, God, because of what you've already done. Because of the way you've already blessed my life, recalling the love of God and His mercy will inspire you and I to worship Him daily. Listen, I don't have to look very far in my past to find where God has bent over backwards to bless my life. To bring forgiveness in my life. All I have to do is begin to think about the, the, the mess that He saved. 
when he was hanging on the cross and he looked down through the corridors of time to a little town called Myrtle Creek, Oregon, and he saw this knothead, and he said, I'm, on, I'm dying for that one right there too. Thank you, God, for what you've done. Recall his love. Recall his mercy. Let those things inspire us to worship him. Psalm 107 is an example of how David recalled God's enduring love. How many of you know what enduring means? Enduring means it, it, it goes through some things. Amen? Amen? And in Psalms 107, verse 1 through 6, it's a great passage for us. And this is what it says. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Listen. For His mercy endures for a while. <laughs> I, just, I just seen if y'all were paying attention. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted in them. And they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distress. How many of you re are represented in that passage of Scripture right there? My goodness sakes. And He delivered them out of their distress. Yes, Mary. Yeah. Amen. And and see he's faithful. He's he's faithful. You know, don't run off the road tonight in the dark. And and <laughs> See I, I, I think I think God sees those things, and I think He uses those kinds of things as as ways to show His people, His His children, that how how deep His His love is for us. So both in the corporate worship setting, which is what we're doing here. And in other places, the singing of psalms and hymns and spiritual songs is truly a great way to express praise to God. It's great to be joined together. Psalm 96, verses 1 through 4. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless His name. Proclaim the good news of His salvation from day to day. I think sometimes, have we forgot that we got saved? I mean, do you think about the fact that you got saved? Do you think about what God did in the process of saving you? And, and it, listen, if that doesn't give you reason, proclaiming the good news of His salvation, oh man, what He done for me. And continues to do day by day by day declare his glory verse 3 among the nations his wonders among all people for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised he is to be feared above all gods there is no greater God than our God he is almighty there is no one above him Ephesians 5 19 and 20 speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord giving thanks once in a while <laughs> oh. 
When the mood strikes you, <laughs> giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul here is encouraging the believers, that's us, to sing and make music that comes from a heart of praise unto God. And it makes a contrast between the music of Christians which are sung together in praise to God and the music of unbelievers that is done purely for entertainment and for self-praise. Think about that. The primary of our singing should be to give thanks to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you understand tonight the joy is of the fruit of the Spirit? Joy is of the fruit of the Spirit. Joy is different from happiness. Joy is different from happiness. Happiness is usually brought on by material things, by possessions. You can have nothing and still be filled with joy. Because joy is an attitude of your heart. Joy comes from an inward, inward uh, event that you have made uh, a commitment that, that, to God. He, is came, he came that we might have joy and that our joy might be full. Amen? So joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And Christian joy, the kind of joy that you and I should have, is not some shallow emotion. It's not a shallow emotion. It's not a thermometer that rises and, and falls with the changing atmosphere of the home or of the workplace. Christian joy is a deep experience of adequacy and confidence in spite of, in spite of, regardless of, the circumstances that surround us. The Christian joy can be, the, the Christian rather can be joyful even in, in the midst of painting, pain and suffering. And so this kind of joy, again, is not, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not, a thermometer, it's a thermostat. Instead of rising and falling with the circumstances, it determines the spiritual temperature of the circumstance. Everything can be falling apart all around us, but we can still have joy. Why? Because I know God's in control of my life. I know the devil can't bring anything to me that God hasn't allowed, that God hasn't seen, that God hasn't made a way, that God hasn't protected me from, if I would just choose to walk in that. The problem is, most of the time, we want to test it to see whether it's really all that much fun or not. And by then, the enemy's got his hooks in us, and we're in big trouble. So Paul put it beautifully when he wrote in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11, he said, I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. Paul said godly contentment is great gain. We live in a society, most of us grew up in a society that has screamed at us that we cannot and should not be content. We've always got to up the game. Something always has to be added. Nothing is ever enough. We're, 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 you know, they're always, you, you, buy a, you buy a computer today, tomorrow that computer is obsolete. soon as you walk out the door, it's obsolete. They've already built another one that will outdo that one by hands down. Settle down. 
Hang on to her. She's about to. Yeah, the, the cool thing about phones is now that at a certain point, they just turn them off and they quit working and you got to go get a new one. How many of you have experienced that? That's a great time. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Mike's like, I ain't getting my new one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We can, we, we, we have a determination to make. Paul said, in, I have learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. Contentment sounds great to just be content. But it is hard. It is hard to attain contention, contentness, meant, but whatever that word is. Where it is where you're content. I'll leave that alone. So Paul, again, in Ephesians, to illustrate the kind of joy that he's talking about, he uses a familiar image of drunkenness. Do not be, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5 and 18. And when the believers at Pentecost were filled with the Spirit, what happened? When the believers at Pentecost were filled with the Spirit, what happened? What else happened? Everybody thought they were drunk. But we're not drunk, as you suppose. We just fill with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen? The crowd accused them of being drunk with new wine in Acts chapter 2, verses 13, 14, and 15. There was such a joyfulness about them that the unbelievers could think no, ma no better comparison than that they were drunk. I don't know if the rest of you have seen, I've, but I've seen people drunk in the Spirit, drunk in the Holy Ghost. I mean, acting goofier than that. Yeah. Laughing uncontrollably. Nothing, not, not, I mean, it's not, it's not fake. People say, well, no, I've seen it. In fact, I've been there. I've done it. it <laughs> there's nothing greater than that. You know why? I can remember everything that I did. Which, if you've been drunk with old wine, that ain't the case. There's no, there's no comparison. I want to look at, I know I'm out of time, but I want to look at, at one more New Testament scripture before I wrap this up. And it's in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. <laughs> we need to learn how to have a heart that is ruled by the peace of God. We need to learn that. We need to learn how to submit ourselves to God in such a fashion that He rules our heart and our life by peace. Some of you are, are being tormented by things. We need to learn how to allow the peace of God 
to, to inhabit our, 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 our life space. Because if we don't get peace in our life, our world is going to be controlled by upheaval, by, by dissension, by anxiety. We need the peace of God. Whatever we do in word or deed, do in the name of the Lord. Let our heart sing with grace in our heart to the Lord. You want to be forgiven? Forgive others. There's a passage of Scripture, and I can't think of what it is, where it is right off the top of my head, but, but it talks about, the implication is, that if, if you're uh, accusing somebody of something over and over, oftentimes it's the very thing that you're guilty of. It's the very thing that you, when you're finding a, a problem in somebody else's life, oftentimes it's because you have that problem. In fact, most of the time, you are the problem. I'm pointing right straight down the hallway, right, right down. N nothing down there. I'm not... <laughs> Amen? We're to let the peace of Christ rule in all things and, and in all differences. The, the best Greek text uh, of this reads the peace of Christ instead of the peace of God. And the word peace means to be bound, joined, and weaved together. When our life is bound up and weaved together uh, in Christ, joined together with Christ, how can we not have peace? I remember the story you, you told about being on the bus. <laughs> and the kids were saying bad stuff. Remember that? And, and you told them they need to quit talking like that because your wife didn't need to hear that kind of stuff. And your back was to the front of the bus and you were on these kids' case and, and they were being lip, they're like a bunch of punks usually are, and being all cocky and lippy. And all of a sudden, their whole expression changed. Their, their whole countenance, just, it just changed. And Mike's like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the man protecting my woman <laughs> to find out that there's a guy about 19 feet tall standing right behind him and went all just bulked out like this. And when that guy stood up, they shut up. They shut up. Mike had no idea the guy was there until the whole thing was over. My illustration of that, my, my reason for bringing that up, is because when we have the God of the universe, when we have the, the, the Most High God, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost of God, when He lives inside of us, there's no thing that we should fear. Nothing. I mean, we got cameras all around our house. We got cameras here. We got cameras there. We got, we, I mean, we got cameras in the dash of our car that let us know what's going on in front. We got cameras that let us know what's going on in the back. Now they got stuff all over the sides of them. We got stuff, we got doorbells. You push the doorbell, it takes your picture. Your phone goes off. In a third world country, your phone's going off because somebody's delivering a package on your door. We've allowed so much technology to come into our life that we're freaking out and we're scared to death of everything. When in fact, we have the Creator in us. Watching over us. Protecting us. Tonight when you go home, you need to be able to lay your head down on your pillow. Shut your eyes. Regardless of any sound you might hear and know that you're being watched over by the God of the universe. That your home is protected by the Holy Ghost of God. And you have no thing to fear when we are bound, when we are joined, and when we are weaved together with the God of the, the, the universe. It means that we are assured, we are confident, we are secure in the love and the care of God. Amen? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Awesome. That's good. 
presence of the Lord. He inhabits the praises of his people. I'm out of time, so I'm going to try and stop. <sighs> Church, we just need to learn how to praise God in spite of anything that's going on around us. Amen. Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you for your word. Truth is, Lord, I thank you for the avenue that you have given us to praise you regardless of where we're at or what we're doing. The Lord, we can exalt you. We can lift you up. We can, we can sing songs to you, psalms and spiritual songs. Lord, we can just make a melody in our heart and begin to hum. And through all of it, bring praise and glory to God. Now, Lord, I pray tonight as we leave this place that, God, your spirit would certainly go with us and that the peace that passes understanding would begin to flood every soul, every heart in this place. God, don't allow the enemy to put any wedges anywhere in our church. Anything that the, that the enemy has tried to use to bring division, I pray, God, right now, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would snatch it out. God, that, that love and harmony and peace would rule this house. Lord, we love you. We lift our voices to you tonight. We love you, Lord. We sing praises to your name. We exalt you. Yes. Peace. Wonderful, wonderful peace. May it sweep over our spirits. Lord, we pray in fathomless billows of love. Sing it, Cat. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Wonderful peace. peace. Coming down from the Father. Coming down from the Father. That's the peace that we can all have. Every one of us. Amen. Father God, watch over us as we leave this place tonight. God, help us to be mindful to praise you. Help us to be mindful that when the, when the enemy is rattling the door, when he's trying to get our mind on him and off of God, Lord, may we be reminded the fathomless billows that flow from God to us are ours. And I thank you for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Hey, God bless you. God go with you. Have a great rest of your week. We will see you ladies in the morning, men Friday night, Saturday morning, men's breakfast, Sunday morning church. God bless you. God go with you. We will see you later. Good night.